Okay, I am undeafened and I am unmuted. Welcome everybody. I am about to start the recording and I realized I forgot to click the start event thing on the other one. Also that I was in the wrong channel for it. So yeah, we're going to start this event. So anybody who RSVP'd for it can now get a little indicator that it is live. So welcome everyone to our latest next quarter new business meeting. This is technically the quarter three meeting, which would have been held. Uh, normally, we would have had this meeting much earlier, but with the wedding and everything, uh, we haven't had one for a little while. So uh, I've gone back through the feedback channels and added some things that people had asked for to the agenda. I've added anything else that anyone else asked for manually. As always, if you have something new to add to the agenda, it's going to be for next quarter. <laughs> we cannot add things this late because it doesn't provide people opportunities for feedback. So we're going to keep this scoped to the agenda. Um, so here we go. Number one on the agenda is Discord channels. This is a big thing that we talk about at these meetings. This is pretty standard. Uh, Tommy, are you good on the recording as well? I'm recording this on my end, but I, I know you like to record it as well. I am live right now. Okay, great. Um, also, since Tommy is here, uh, a lot of times Tommy will actually help lead us through the agenda uh, as our community liaison. So, Tommy, do you want to kick us off with 1A here? Sure thing. So, the first item we have on the agenda is about Discord channels, and 1A is adding a seasonal channel for Halloween and Christmas-type preparations and excitement. Anybody have any thoughts either way on this? This is just one of those things where I noticed that, like, general tends to get eaten by these things. And I know some people don't celebrate all hol holidays, and that can be kind of a bummer. Um, but like, this isn't anything I saw any huge demand for, just a random brainstorming thing. If you guys think it'd be useful, I can add it. If you don't, I won't. I'm going to open the floor for discussion. Okay, well, there's been no discussion. Tommy, do you have any thoughts on this? As somebody with your pulse, maybe more on the, your finger on the pulse of the community than I do, would this be a net positive, net negative, or we I try it? It would be a net positive. I think it's a good idea worth trying, and if it doesn't get used, we can always remove it. Okay. Yeah, I, I just, um, you know, I've been asking myself, how can we make this Discord feel more like a Kmart? And I feel like having a strong seasonal section is really going to give it that blue light special feeling that people love. So, okay, uh, Tommy, you let, let's go ahead and mark that as pending. Because, um, yeah, at the end of this meeting, hopefully I'll have a list of all the things I need to do. I'm not going to be necessarily adding these channels in the middle of the meeting. Um, so, Tommy, if you want to take us down to item 1B, what do we got? 1B is add gaming genre channels, such as gaming life sim, for games like Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, The Sims. Yeah, there's a lot of Animal Crossing stuff. We've got a tabletop role-playing game area, but it's not, like, scoped as Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder. We've got Pinball, but it's not, you know, we don't have a channel for Stern's John Wick Pro Pinball Table, right? We just have kind of general pinball. Um... You know, and I realized, like, we maybe need something more broad than just Animal Crossing, but maybe, um, you know, because there's new Stardew Valleys, there's Sims is getting in a lot of announcements. I don't play these games, but I feel like having some genre channels might kind of help break out that discussion a little bit more. And um, kind of, I don't want people to think of gaming general as the Animal Crossing channel, if that makes sense. Um so the particular example I gave was a gaming life sim channel, but does anybody think of, can anybody think of any other genres that they would like to see channels added for? Do you think this is a bad idea in general? Uh, let's open the floor. Uh, I think in general it'd, it'd be good. It would clean up the gaming general channel a lot. I know I kind of like, I don't play those games, so I kind of like just, click mark all red periodically when I go to that, when I check out that channel. Mm -hmm. Then I notice like someone's talking about, okay, we got, we're all going to do this thing. And it's like, oh, well, I'm just not going to read this for like ever now. 
Yeah, I was kind of assuming that the Animal Crossing talk would probably end up off on its own server eventually, but it does seem like there is demand for a space for people playing those kinds of games here. And, you know, I'm kind of trying to future-proof the infrastructure some so we're not constantly adding and removing channels. So, you know, if there's a next-generation Animal Crossing type game, I think a lot of the same people would play it, and then we've already got a place for that set up. So it doesn't just get immediately dumped into game in general. Um, are there any other genres that people think would be appropriate to add? Like, you know, in theory, we could go through a list of every gaming genre there is, like racing. But like, I don't know that there's a lot of demand for racing games here. Um, is there anything people have noticed a lot of people talking about or that you feel like you would talk about more if there was a space for it? Let's uh, open that back I know up. I see people talking about Pokemon a lot. We do have a Pokemon channel. Do we? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. But no, I mean, that's good, though, that we have a Pokemon channel because people do talk about it a lot. That's that's exactly kind of the fit. Pokemon isn't exactly a genre, but it is like a series with so many. They probably got 40 different games out there between Pokemon Pinball, Pokemon Adventure League, Pokemon this, Pokemon Snap, you know. Pokemon that. So I feel like, yeah, Pokemon is a good umbrella category for all of those games. So it kind of fits that same niche as a genre channel. Um, but yeah, I just didn't want people to be like, oh man, how come the life sim people get their get their own channel, but um, you know, these other types of games, like you know, do we want a factory game channel? Because, you know, I've been playing Satisfactory a lot, um, which I created a channel for, but maybe people want to talk about shapes or factorio. Um, I don't know. Anybody? I just wanted to mention that Centurion suggested a horror genre in the meetings discussion channel. Ah, okay. I don't think there's a use for seasonal channel. Or I do think there's a use for the seasonal channel. Horror question mark? Um, like for horror games. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because like we had ten bells, and like we've been messing around with a lot of things, like uh, Moida House. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Gaming horror is also one that I could see some people wanting to ban. Guy Eagle says comfy game channel versus uncomfy game channel. I don't want to name something cozy or comfy games because I don't want to have to deal with definitions there. Um, but like. I feel like, you know, Life Sim is an umbrella that a lot of those cozy games fall under anyway. So then we don't have to, we can argue about what is a Life Sim, I think, more cleanly than what is a cozy game um, as a genre. Um, but yeah, thank you for calling my attention to those comments. Yeah, the horror genre would be good so people can mute it as well, and people don't have to spoiler things as much in the main genre, uh, in the main gaming channel. Maybe a game of the week channel for if any game has taken over discussion too long. That that's too hard to. That requires more active moderation, not in the like punishing people sense, but in the like leading the discussion sense. Then I think we're. I feel like a Game of the Week channel would be good if I had a Game of the Week club where every week we play a different indie game. And that sounds like a really awesome idea. Now that I'm saying it out loud, but I definitely don't have the time for that right now. If I had the capacity to run that, that's that's a, a back burner idea for in the future when my kid is more self-sufficient and I have slightly less responsibility, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's a good idea for the future, but not, I think, for now. Okay, so... The channel ideas we have um, so far are basically life sim and horror. Doesn't sound like there's a real demand for factory stuff. Joju says, I've been playing shapes, but I don't know if there's enough material. Yeah. Okay. Well, if people don't feel strongly about it, uh, are there any other suggestions we should consider? Or do we just maybe add um, under games, horror, and life sims? I think for that for now that's good. And we'll we'll probably you know think of other ones in the future. Yeah, because like the word games channel, I liked having a word games channel more than having a wordle channel because then when there was a specific problem with the New York Times Union, it's not like oh do I delete this channel now or do I put it on hold or mute it? 
you know, like having things broader kind of feels like it's easier from a moderation standpoint. So yeah, if other people see these taking off and then uh, that opens some doors for later. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, cool. So Tommy, um, make sure to note that uh, as pending, I need to create a games life sim channel and a games horror channel. Got it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Tommy. And then if you want to take us into our next agenda item. The next agenda item is renaming the identity channel to your identity. Sure. I want to talk a little bit about this. The identity channel is always something that I was the most nervous about being in charge of. Um, and having a great staff supporting me has been really reassuring and, and proven that I think there is a space for this channel here. This is not, does this channel deserve to exist? I think we've proven we can run it and, and do it in a constructive way. The only thing that comes up sometimes is that sometimes people use it as a place to quiz other people about their identities. Like, hey, can somebody please explain this to me? And that's not really what it's for. Nobody who's paying to be here is paying to be interrogated about their belief system. And so somebody rolling into that channel and being like, hey, I heard it's a Jewish holiday today. Somebody explain this holiday to me. That's that's not what I want, right? I want somebody, if you're from that background and you're like, oh man, I just got back from my family's dinner where we celebrated this holiday and here's how it went. That that's It, it should be a sharing channel, not an interrogation channel. And I feel like just when we have had people come in and ask questions, like to kick off conversations like that. It's never been with bad intentions, but it is one of those things where like as a moderator, I or somebody else has to step in and just be like, hey, just so you know, that's not really what this is for. Um, and I feel like just putting the word your in front of identity to make it sh clear that this is a place for you to share your identity rather than to start conversations to interrogate others. It's just a small tweak that I think will just relieve some moderation stress. Uh, I'm ready to open the floor for discussion. I think I know it already says in the channel description for identity to only talk about your own identity. It does. Maybe we could reword that somehow too to make it a little more clear. I think that pro the problem is that the channel's um, descriptions aren't necessarily obvious on mobile or certain format or certain yeah. ways that people access Discord. So just putting it in the title, I think, is the clean solve here. I can't imagine what problems this would make other than moving it alphabetically down the list slightly, but that doesn't seem terrible to me. I'm not trying to say that your identity is less important than space and technology, but I will say that Y does start with Y, um, or does have the letter Y at the beginning of your, you know? So that would slightly move where it is in the list, but I don't think that this is a huge night and day tweak. Stellar Spider says, I've had people that make like heart lighthearted jokes about the words I use for my identity, and I don't appreciate that because I was talking about something serious to me. That is definitely a moderation issue that is distinct from that. Unless they were, were... If you were already talking about something serious and they were being jerks, that's a different moderation issue than them coming in and being like, what the hell is up with this term? You see what I'm saying? Like, um, So... Des says, if we wanted to have something about people asking for help understanding identities or sexual issues, uh, we could have a channel like asking for emotional labor to explain this channel. That's the thing is like, I don't want people to pay five to 10 to even more a month to do emotional labor here. Um, and and so like, I I think some of these topics are going to come up naturally over the course of discussing current events or other things. I don't think we need a dedicated channel for that. Does anybody have any objections besides Vin Show Ken to me renaming the channel? Vin Show Ken writes, I don't want it to change locations. <laughs> anybody else have any objections? No objections to the name, just kind of a, a thought, and I it's more of a moderation issue, so it's kind of mm -hmm. a... Um, which is how to, well, I guess it's both fields and identity. One, how to um, differentiate between the two, because sometimes those two channels are blurred. Um, mm -hmm. And two, um, how to prevent uh, 
it becoming like people not seeking medical attention when they should or appropriate uh, professional um, help when they should get that. Yeah, uh, in terms of the feels versus identity thing, I mean, it. people can have strong feelings about their identity, and they can have strong feelings about other things. Um, so I guess it's kind of up to the individual. We haven't really been too heavy-handed with pushing people away from one channel and into the other, or at least I don't think I've been. If you guys disagree, if we've been pushing too hard, uh, let me know. But yeah, I feel like that's just, I feel like it's important to have distinct channels for that stuff because it's it's not the same. There is going to be overlap in certain cases, but not in all cases. Um, so, yeah, if if that's something we need to revisit in terms of channel definitions, we could try to make that more clear. But like, honestly, I don't I don't know that we could. I feel like it's always going to be kind of a gray area where you know, we just kind of let people make their own decisions and we try not to push them too hard. Um, in terms of people seeking medical help who need it, that's also going to be kind of a case by case thing. I feel like we've done what we could to structurally provide resources for people. Um, but if there's, if there's structural things that you want to suggest, that's the sort of thing we'd want to think about and talk about behind the scenes with the staff. I don't, that's not going to be in scope for this discussion, but um, definitely provide that feedback in written form so I can take it to the staff and we can make, we can consider structural changes to support that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I'll think about it some more when I, I'm not in the middle of a relapse. So yeah. Thanks. No, that's, that's fair. Um, I'm not trying to make, um, once again, like you guys aren't paying to do work, or emotional labor, but like if there's something where you're like, oh, it seems like things would be a lot easier. If, if there's something intuitively obvious to you, you know, write it up and let us know. And, um, you know, obviously not all the moderators can be here um, during this discussion uh, because, you know, people's schedules and whatnot. Um, so Tommy's actually the only staff member here. And so, you know, things that are going to involve like staff approach, we want to have the staff involved with. Um, but okay. Uh, Stellar Spider says, uh, about the identity and people joking. I was talking about my identity and they ended up making a joke about Hermitcraft around the word occupation. I guess it's a moderation issue to support a less joking tone in the channel. So tone and joking is a, is a big problem from a moderation standpoint in general, because, you know, I am somebody who I cope with everything through humor and, trying to make sure that that humor isn't harmful to others is important to me, but I'm also paid to be funny. So I spend a lot more time thinking about how my jokes might come across than some of the people here. And so, yeah, people making jokes about their own identity isn't something we want to discourage, but people making jokes about other people's identity is something we want to discourage, right? So I don't want to just put a huge serious tag on the channel and say no joking in here, because if you can't joke about your own identity, well, for me, that is part of my identity is joking, right? Like that, that doesn't work. Um, and so, yeah, if you can, you know, let people know that you feel uncomfortable with that or file a mod mail complaint, like, you know, if you filed a mod mail complaint and say, hey, there's a moderation issue in the identity channel, you know, I'm I'm trying to share something serious and, you know, these people are derailing it. This is not necessarily a bannable offense moderation issue. This is a discussion nudging moderation issue. Once again, moderation isn't all about timeouts and bans. Sometimes it's about making sure the conversation stays on track. Um, I don't I don't want somebody filing a mod mail complaint every time someone makes an off topic joke, but if it's specifically about the, I, if it's in the identity channel and you're trying to share something serious and they're screwing that up, that's maybe a case. This the identity and feels channels are two places where a little bit more involved conversational nudging would be appropriate. If that makes any sense. Um, 
you know, Neon Wyvern says, maybe mention up front you don't want jokes as well. I mean, but y- that's the sort of thing, like, everybody expects if they're sharing something, something serious, like, they know they're saying something serious, but and they kind of expect people to receive that in text that doesn't always go through. But it's it's not Stellar's job to say, like, hey, please don't crack jokes about this serious thing I'm sharing right now. Right? Um, like, I... I just, I want everybody to be kind of, in general, like the Fields Channel and the Identity Channel are places where we need to be slightly more considerate. You know, somebody cracking jokes about somebody's Animal Crossing village, like being messy, is different than like cracking do- jokes about somebody's like, you know, family history or things like that that they're sharing in the Identity Channel. And, uh, so yeah, I mean this is this is going to be the sort of thing that we're going to you know have to deal with case by case. Um Stellar Spice says I want it to be a pinned comment of what you just said so the guideline is clear. Okay, Tommy, could you make a note for the next staff meeting um to have me write up some sort of general comment on like jokes uh, or or you know the the uh the application of humor in identity and feels just something to kind of be like hey just here's a clarification you know please be extra considerate that sort of thing yeah i can get that okay um but yeah this is not something we are going to solve during this meeting because it wasn't technically on the agenda but we can add things to the agenda for the next next quarter meeting and we can add things to the agenda for the next staff meeting so i will talk about this with the staff and we will get back to you in about a month well Hopefully two weeks, but I'm not sure if we're going to have time for a meeting before Thanksgiving because everybody's schedules are nuts. So, yeah, this is, yeah, if it's not on the agenda, don't expect it to get resolved today. It will definitely be considered, though, and considered seriously by people who care. So um, I think, Tommy, that we are going to go ahead and move forward. Can you put a pending note on renaming identity to your identity? so that I can do that, because it didn't yes. seem like there were any objections other than Vin disliking the alphabetization thing, which I don't think is a blocker. I think we got to move forward. Sorry about that, Vin Shoken. Um, okay, so then let's go ahead, and uh, our next thing is 1D. Tommy, you want to bring that up to us? 1D is asking, would adding a spam fashion you war channel meet folks' needs, or is the preference to push for a broader fashion discussion channel? Yeah, we, we've had a lot of random feedback about a fashion channel over the years, and I it, it was just one of those things where it's fashion is such a broad topic. I was like, okay, if we just scope it to like people talking about stuff... Th- outfits they're putting together or things they're wearing, then that feels kind of within scope for moderation. And also people are already doing that in the spam photos you shot channel. So it basically is just, we're forking the spam photos you shot channel to have um, a outfits or fashion thing. Um, Would that be amenable to the people who currently use the photos channel and the people who want fashion channel. Neon Wyvern says outfit of the day channel. People could post their outfit if they wanted their daily. I wouldn't, it it would be a spam channel. So it's explicitly one of those. The thing about the spam channel is you shouldn't feel guilty about posting whatever you want to post as long as you made it right. Spam out to you fit. <laughs> Jojo, I love that name, but we're not going to use it. Um, but um, Gaia says, I would like a broader fashion channel for general discussion and picks. I, I feel like, uh, I feel like a, a full on fashion thing is the sort of topic like motorcycle repair where there's a lot to it and I'm not equipped. I don't have the background required to run it and moderate it. Well, it feels like it should be its own server. Um, At the same time, I feel like this is one of those things where if we have this channel and it's not 
creating additional moderation overhead after three to six months, I'm more likely to come back and say, okay, maybe we have a fashion channel. Also, it's possible that the people who constantly use the spam fashion you wore channel um, might decide to create their own community and meet your needs better anyway. Um, Cause that's not something I know how to do a good job at is basically what it comes down to. And I'm stretched pretty thin as it is. So I'm trying to scope my responsibilities as responsibly as I can. So Gaia would still like a general fashion channel, but like this doesn't Gaia, do you see this as a problem or as is this half measured going to do more harm than good in your opinion? I don't think it's a problem. I think it'd just be nice to have the full fashion channel. Fair enough. Okay. So, Leah, let's go ahead and uh, it doesn't sound like there's any objections to giving this a try and we'll see where it goes. So, uh, Tommy, go ahead and put Spam Fashion You Wore as a pending new channel. And then uh, let us go into 1E. All right, for 1E, we have re-add other meetups channel for events that you aren't attending or hosting. Yeah, people asked me if I could create a PAX Unplugged channel, and I feel like something that specific is not the direction I want to go. I do think having a general other meetups channel where people can at least coordinate, like, hey, we spun up a Discord server for PAX Unplugged, or hey, we, you know, hey, is anybody going to this thing? Is anybody going to that thing? Like, I feel like a lobby for the, those concepts is not necessarily a bad idea, but I don't want to be on the hook to add and remove a ton of event channels. Does anybody uh, object to an other meetups channel or have any thoughts one way or the other? Joju says, uh, I requested that. The reason I asked is because I associated that with this uh I don't know what that communicate means in this context. Could be a mistake on my part. Well, yeah, Joju. So the reason that Pax Unplugged was on there before was because those were Pax Unplugs I was attending. And I always create channels for events I'm attending. But since I'm not going this year, there wouldn't be a channel for it. Um, so this way, though, you know, let's say Chicago Pinball Expo. The years I go, it gets a channel. The years I don't go... Mr. Hardluck can still coordinate with the other people that are going to be going. Could this be for only events you have attended in the past but aren't attending this time? I don't think that's a good a good uh, bracket there, Kindleless, for this reason. PAX West, I've never been to, but there's a lot of people that might want to go. TwitchCon, never been to. A lot of people might want to go. TwitchCon, you're up. VidCon, like there's... There's events where Hermitcraft fans go hang out that I might never get to, but I think they should be in scope for this channel. That's that's my thought there. Anybody else have any thoughts? Is it limited? Sorry, would it be limited to just uh, or just organized events? Because I can see a scenario in which people start organizing, organizing fan events. And while I trust basically everyone I've spoken to on this server, it yeah. does raise question how much liability you want for people organizing things in this space. Well, that's why there's uh, that's why I'm I'm calling it upcoming meetups and not necessarily upcoming events, right? Let's say that you were going to be in Homedale, New Jersey, and you're like, guys, I want to go to the the coffee shop in the real Homedale, uh, Bell Laboratories Research and Development Center, right? Um, anybody else want to go? Uh, who's in the area? I'm going to be there Saturday from three to five. I'll bring my TCG cards. I I feel like. You know, that's the sort of thing that I'm not going to shut down, right? If you were like, hey, I'm spinning up this island getaway, and anybody who gives me $2,000, I'll get you a, a, a book you a, a room on a cruise ship, and we're all going to go on this cruise. I need $2,000 from everybody. That I'm, that I'm going to be like, whoa, no, <laughs> right? Okay, uh, that, that, that's the kind of thing I was worried about, is, like, is what is... As long as there's an upper limit on 
what people can advertise and promote in there that's still within the scope of things that you can accept responsibility for as the unofficial organizer given that your name is on the server yeah 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 that's that's the thing is like if it looks like somebody is scamming people here if you see something that looks super suspicious like um even if it's from somebody that you know on the server and trust maybe their account got compromised if mailman dave all of a sudden starts selling three thousand dollar um you know tickets to like right you know let's go up the amazon three thousand dollars yeah here's my you know wire transfer me three grand and i'll get you a seat Post a, post a link to that, right? Right. Let a, you know, get the mod mail going, because yeah, um, that might be that person's account is compromised at that point too, right? And we need to deal with that. Um, you know, I need to send him a message via another means, like through Patreon, to let him know, hey, your account looks compromised. What's up, dude? Because um, he might not realize it, you know. So that's that's the sort of thing where, um, yeah, we. I'm not going to set hard and fast rules on what constitutes a meetup. But if you see somebody doing something scammy, let the moderation team know and we'll take a look at it. So Dave, thank you for your patience on being named there. Um, I'm just, you might, I'm just trying to say there's a lot of people here that we all trust, but um, you know, if they start asking for a lot of money, let's, let's look at that real hard. Okay. Um, so it sounds like there's no argument against that. Did anybody have a, any other concerns or questions about that? Okay, it doesn't sound like it. So, um, yeah, Tommy, go ahead and uh, put pending that I will add an, a new other meetups channel for events that I'm not attending or hosting. You got it. Okay. So this next one, this is this is a, a, a pretty serious item um and i am not bringing this to you guys as a fait accompli this is not something that i decided and i'm going to jam it through this is something that i'm not sure about and i'm genuinely opening this to the floor for conversation and what i'm looking at is possibly switching current or moving current events into a text only channel um because you know, things like charts and graphs and maps can be helpful. Um, but a lot of times people are posting screenshots of text that don't necessarily have alt text to them or the charts and graphs don't necessarily have alt text. So whereas if you link to the source, in theory, that news source or whoever did have alt text, and that would be better. Also, I really don't like memes in the current events channel. Um they take up a lot of space when people are scrolling. There's a lot of reaction memes where people are posting faces and it's like, this isn't, it feels like it, it doesn't fit the tone of the conversation for me. Um, but there's no structural way for me to like ban memes in there while allowing other images to be posted, making it a text only channel. Then we don't have to moderate what counts as a meme. Well, this has a chart in it. It's like, uh, I don't know. Um, so the other thing, too, is I really am not comfortable with the amount of AI-generated slop on the internet right now. We're going to see a lot more websites posting about parades in Dublin. Um, there's companies in India now that are just using AI to write fake news about the whole planet. And somebody actually even posted one of these the other day and was like, what the hell is this? I can't believe there's a meteor about to hit the Earth. I can't find this in any other news source. What, what is going on here? And I'm like, you, you got scammed. You got to take that down. Don't don't post links to news sources if you've never heard of them. Because like that's the thing. is I'm like, w tell me about this news source. And they're like, I don't know. It's some company in India. I'm like, well, you're vouching for them by sharing that link. Don't, don't share links to, to sources that you don't know are real news right? Like, I'm not going to say it has to be from the New York Times or Washington Post, because small town local newspapers can be the subject matter experts on things. But random websites from India are not going to be the experts on NASA stuff. That's just not it. You know, now the Kansas City Star might be able to tell us what's happening in Kansas City, which could be very important in some way, if there is a natural disaster there or something, we want the on the ground reporting. So I don't want to I'm not going to try and whitelist or blacklist certain URLs. That's insane. That is impossible to do 
and run a good current events channel. But I do want to have people linking to things rather than screenshotting them. So that way, other participants in the conversation can go to the source themselves and check if it's real. Because we're going to have... It's going to be so easy for people to generate fake screenshots. And I'm not saying that anybody here would intentionally create those, but I could see somebody here seeing something like that somewhere and then resharing it here. Meaning well, but it's harder for other people to check your work if you're just uploading the image directly than if you're linking to the source because then other people can evaluate the source. So this, these are all the factors that I'm considering that led me to put this on here. But there might be other factors that I haven't considered about why we really want images on that channel. I'm going to go ahead and open the floor for discussion. Um, sorry, if no one else wants to go first. I was um, going to call on you first. If nobody said anything, I was going to say, Joju, as our political expert, if nobody else wants to talk, why don't you talk? So yes, thank you for kicking this off. That's a lot of responsibility, but I'm honored. Uh, so the issue I see with it immediately is text only mode does restrict content from links so you don't get the headlines. Now, that could be a good thing, and it solves both problems at once, actually, if you do that, but also have some guidelines for actual posts. Like, you have to provide a two-sentence summary of what the article you're linking is and what the source is. So some kind of submission guideline of if you want to include outside sources in a text only channel would make sense, I think. It requires more work, but I think it does ultimately improve the quality of information that goes through it. I don't necessarily want to set hard submission guidelines like that. I, I see the value of that in a more structured academic space. If I was a professor and this was a, a group chat for my class, I would 100% do that. And I see why, you know, you're recently out of academia. That makes a lot of sense to you. And it... But in terms of this, I'm not trying to make this space drastically less casual. I understand that removing memes would make it somewhat less casual. But I feel like somebody just saying, if somebody's going to post a link, they're, they're going to generally provide some context. If, if somebody, all they do is spam links with no context, they're going to get kicked out of here anyway, right? Like, so I don't think we need to have hard submission guidelines. Like, if I saw something about the Nashville transit plan, I'd go, oh man, they're breaking ground on this next week and I'm really excited and here's why. And, you know, maybe I should explicitly say in that they're breaking ground on this Nashville transit plan thing next week, but anybody who clicks through the URL would read about the Nashville transit plan. Um, and I don't, I don't feel like I don't know. I don't feel like it's a huge problem if sometimes people occasionally forget to say specifically what the link is about. You know, like if, if they're yeah. like, hey, my MP is doing this and I can't believe it. It's like, well, it would have been better in theory if they said my MP is trying to get mailboxes outlawed and I don't believe it. But uh, I don't I don't think that that's the sort of thing that we need to come into heavy handed with on the moderation. I don't know. Other I'm thoughts specifically. I'm specifically seeing, sorry, I'm specifically seeing the problem, though, of if people post links right now, the presumption is the headline will show up with it. That mm -hmm. doesn't happen if you're in a text-only channel. I think that people would adapt to that pretty quick, though. Like, I mean, because that's how it used to be anyway. Like, these embedded quick links are only, like, new in the last few years or whatever, and it was never really a problem before. And I don't think it needs to be a problem again. I think people, yeah, the first few days they might not remember, but I don't think we need to go at it too hard. I think they'll catch up. That's just my mm -hmm. gut instinct. And I might be wrong about that. And uh, we could, th 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 this would be the sort of change though, that if this is a stupid idea and it blows up in my face, I would be willing to revert it next quarter. Um, this is kind of, once again, this is not something where I'm 100% sure that this is something we have to do. But my gut says we should probably try it because I'm really, I'm anticipating there's going to be a lot more miscommunication around memes as we approach a second Trump term. And I feel like 
forcing people to articulate themselves in words there is a worthwhile endeavor for kind of maintaining the feasibility of having a space like this. Like, um, there's a reason that a lot of people who run video gaming discords will have a rule that says no political events, no current events. That's not the space I want to run, but I do have to think very carefully about how I kind of keep the train on the track here. Um, so what I'm thinking is we try the text only thing for this quarter. And if it works well, we keep it. If it blows up in my face, we change it next quarter, um, which would be, uh, you know, early January or mid January, probably 2025. Um, the big thing was if there was something I wasn't considering that was going to like, if this is a total, like, you know, uh, shooting myself in the foot thing because I, I completely missed something. I would want you guys to tell me now because we won't do the experiment if it's absolutely 100% certain to fail. But I kind of, my gut says this is worth trying. Am I, does anybody, um, Jojo, do you have other concerns before we open the floor back to everybody else? No, I'm done. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts uh, either way? I'm more looking for concerns that would mean we shouldn't do the experiment than support at this point. Because kind of like my default, I'm leaning toward we try this. But I just want to make sure that that's not a stupid, stupid idea. So let's see. In meetings discussion, we got some text here. Um, oh, wow. I was... Um, Neil Wyvern says, I like memes as a way to vent about current events, but there's many other sources of that, so it doesn't bother me. That's the thing, though, is I don't want the current events channel to be a venting channel. And and so that also kind of keeps things back in feels, maybe. And which is also, I think, a text channel, partially because people trying to express their feelings through memes ended up being kind of a moderation minefield, where when everybody has a similar background it's a lot easier to have a space where people vent through memes, but because this is explicitly an intersectional space where we're bringing people from across several generations from across several continents into one place, it's just, it's just easier to kind of make sure that people are focused on expressing themselves through writing rather than because memes might, ha there might be elements to them that somebody picking the meme doesn't realize are important or significant to another culture or things like that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm going to see what other people are writing. Uh, Des says, on the surface, it sounds good. I'm curious to see what other people think. Um, Lakshmi13 says, it was post from Washington Post, New York Times. I post screenshots from because most people don't have accounts and it's not accessible to them otherwise. Well, that's... But, like, you know, it, it's one of those things, like, if people don't want to get accounts for those, there's internet archive options. There's, there's ways they can route around that. Um... You know, uh, but realistically, it's also important for us to maybe if we're looking to share something important, you know, is the Washington Post the most local source for that news? Is there a better local newspaper that doesn't have a subscription that's got a journalist on the street covering it? Um, so I don't know. Um, Lakshmi13 says, I didn't realize that current events was only current news. I thought it was a place to talk about what's happening in current news. It is. It is absolutely a place to talk about what's happening. Um, cur yeah, current events isn't just about news articles. It's about, like, if you go to a rally in your city, you know, and you see, like, oh, hey, you know, there's protests against Trump's immigration stuff, you can share your firsthand experiences in current events. That is a current event you are a part of. It doesn't have to be just links to, hey, here's the news coverage from this rally I went to, right? Um, Lakshmi13 says, I don't click on links without knowing what it is. One thing you can do is you can copy and paste it into Google if you feel strongly about that. Um, Zoe Kin says, memes are open to interpretation, so I guess limiting that would be positive. Um, Mailman Dave says, I think current events should be more for information and the principle that memes don't do. There's reasons for images, but I think a source link should have that information. Okay. So 
it doesn't sound like there's any written feedback here that explicitly says this isn't worth testing. So let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, Tommy, go ahead and mark this as pending, um, but that we are also going to review this at the 2025 quarter one meeting. I actually had a question from a moderation standpoint. Yes. So if, we're, if one of the main reasons behind this change is to not have memes posted in the current events channel, are we also yep. discouraging jokes in general being made in the current events channel? Not at all. No, that's a totally different thing. Because there's a difference between um, someone creating their own framework for expression and someone trying to express themselves by using someone else's framework. Like, if... Um, let's say that there was a current event and uh, I was like, oh, you know, this reminds me of a poem. Copying and pasting that text of that poem in there would be just as inappropriate of, oh, this reminds me of a meme from Toy Story. Right? It's, it's not helpful in that it doesn't necessarily move the discussion forward in a um, user centric point of view. It's uh, which I understand sometimes when people are grappling with complex concepts, they want to reach for stuff like that. And that's helpful for them personally, but in terms of keeping the discussion going, um, it's just, it would be just as inappropriate to post a random poem even if the poem was kind of topical you don't know post a link to that poem don't post the text of that poem right it's kind of how i'm feeling it um mantua maker says i have a disability issue with many memes i cannot see any flashy memes at all they trigger a migraine or seizure and i have to get off the computer for the rest of the day after seeing a meme for just a few seconds yeah see that's that's also a concern is animated memes are like a whole thing I when I launched this Discord, Discord didn't support embedding images or video or any of this stuff. And I never wanted to run a place that had all these things. And so I feel like it's kind of been a concession to modernity that they exist on any channels at all. Uh, but yeah, I I'm trying to be very careful not to completely overwhelm everyone with my preferences and i'm trying to pick and choose where i think that avoiding these things might be better and current events just kind of feels like a thing um joju says what's the line between this reminds me of a poem and this reminds me of a thing that expressly happened in landmark book about fascism okay so here's the thing joju is if you are saying hey you know if you this actually reminds me of I'm, I know that Catcher in the Rye isn't a landmark book about fascism. It's just my go-to book because of um, Fields of Dreams. You know, if you were to say, you know, this is kind of like in in um, in in Catcher in the Rye, how Holden always complains about people standing in his light, but then the second he needs somebody for something, he goes and bothers them by standing in their light. You expressing that as a metaphor is fine. If you were like. Let me post photographs of the book. That would not be good. If you were like, let me copy and paste an entire chapter of Catcher in the Rye, that would not be good, right? Um, you you really... Uh, like, this is not to discourage people from putting excerpts from things either. The screenshot thing... The biggest problem with the screenshot thing is is that, you know, there's the alt text and there's a lack of sourceability. You can't copy and paste the text easily. If you were like, you know, hey, one of my political textbooks, this, says this, and then you, you, you copy in the relevant sentence or paragraph. Lakshmi13 says, I have a question more about legality than rules here. Is it legal to copy and paste a whole article and then link it? No, don't, well, don't, don't do that. That's... A whole article is too much, right? Like, but if you're like, hey, here's three sentences from this article. Posting that with the link is fine. Um, but yeah. Neon Wyvern says, I heard Discord is getting stricter about piracy. Um, yeah, that's another good reason not to post entire books. Yeah, from, from a copyright standpoint, you can legally post excerpts of things. 
and you're 100% in the clear with a small excerpt and a link. So if you have a, a relevant excerpt and a link, you should be fine. But yeah, I don't, I don't want people photographing a book and being like, you know, the entire 10th chapter of Catcher in the Rye is really resonating with me here. That's kind of not ideal. Um, Mailman Dave says, I know other forums that, that have a rule you can't post more than three sentences from an article. I'm not going to enforce a three sentence max. I don't, once again, I try to avoid making rules, but this is like, like that are too specific because then we have to enforce them, right? Just common sense. If you're linking to an article, say what it is and, you know, don't have a huge excerpt. Just do the relevant excerpt. You know, if you want to mention something from a book, you know, you can, cop, you know, you can type that relevant sentence in it's one sentence or whatever but don't photograph a whole page and post it that's a different problem um but yeah okay so it seems like we can give this a go um so but like i explicitly i want to review it um our, realistically our next quarterly meeting will probably be held in mid-january we don't have it on the calendar yet but that'll be a week or two after the Trump inauguration. And we can see how people feel about current events then and um, make an informed choice about whether or not we make this change permanent. So does that sound good to everybody? Last chance for objections before we move on. And I don't see any. So Tommy, let's go ahead and move on to our next item. The next item kind of goes in hands with the last item where it's policy, make a policy that only links to sources the poster believes to be reputable should be shared in current events. Yeah. And so I think this is a pretty straightforward thing um, because there's a lot of, you know, those AI slop websites I was talking about with the parades in Dublin and whatnot. I don't want to set a high bar for sharing links to all websites in all places. If somebody's posting something in the Pokemon channel that, oh, it turns out this game journalism website was an AI fake site. Like, uh, that, that's not as bad as somebody sharing something about a meteorite about to hit Earth, right? So I feel like just in general, um, we should have a policy that if you're sharing a link to current events, it should be something that, you know that it's a real website. And if you don't know if it's a real website, like for a real news organization, find that out one way or another before you waste a lot of other people's time. Um, I feel like that's going to be a, a media literacy thing that is going to be evolving and shifting a lot as the landscape changes. But um, we all kind of need to do our part to keep our conversations focused on things generated by people rather than computers. Um, does this seem unfair or asking too much of anybody? Kindle says, is it acceptable to have a post that goes, I'm struggling to verify the claims in this article. Has someone seen corroborating sources? Well, that was the context in which the meteorite thing was posted. What I would say is, if you, if the article, if you want corroborating claims for an article from a reputable source, then, yeah. If, if you're like, okay, the the Toronto Star, which I don't know what the real name of the Toronto newspaper is. Toronto Star posted this, but nobody else is reporting it. Does anybody know anything about the situation? That's fine. But if you're asking us to verify if, like, the Channel 18 news site, which is run by somebody in India, it, can anybody corroborate this? Like... Don't, don't, what I would say is don't, though, posts like that are acceptable if the initial source is re reputable, right? The, the, in, the platform has to have some rough level of trust, you know, um, Queen Dark Lady says, I wonder how much a foreign website might look like AI slop if it's been translated to English by AI. Well, the thing is though, it, I don't like, it doesn't look like a lot of these foreign websites that are being translated to English by AI. It doesn't look like the writing there was written by a human in the first place. Uh, or if it was 
like it was written by somebody who's just making up stuff about meteors and not somebody who like talked to NASA scientists. If the scientists referenced in the article aren't real, then that's a problem, right? Like, um, what about sharing shifty things in terms of heads up? This is being shared by others who think it's true, but it's not. Um, like the Daily Wire says there's a communist rally in my hometown, but I was there and there wasn't. Okay, I would say if let's let's go back to the Dublin parade example. If you live in Dublin and you went to this parade and there was no parade, posting, man, I got hoodwinked here. That's fine, I guess. Like that's interesting in terms of the state of the art of journalism and technology, but uh Joju says, link verification problem can be solved with better media literacy, which is outside the responsibility of Joe Hills, the Minecraft guy we like. If it's something you want to tackle, you can, but it's a separate initiative. Well, here's the thing, Joju, is I, I feel like if I can't ensure a baseline of media, if I can't ensure that the current events discussion area is a place where people are only sharing things from legitimate sources, like maybe this is out of scope for what I do entirely. And I would like to think that that's not the case. I would like to think it's possible for me. I have a degree in history. I know how to check if sources are real or not. Like, I feel like this is enough in my wheelhouse that I should be able to run a place like this. But um, if people are like, I really want to post links without checking if they're from real places or not, I feel like that's a lack of consideration for others that would maybe not make them a great fit for participation here. Um, Alpacatastic says, one problem with people sharing links they know are false, even if it's only in warning, is that such articles exist to drive clicks and sharing them helps promote them the way they want. Yeah, that's another thing, is that's actually a good point about why not to link something even if it's in the negative sense. Joju says, what you're suggesting here works in general, but I don't think it's worth trying to solve every edge case. I also am not trying to solve every edge case. I'm trying to create a rough blanket rule that gives the moderator something to point to if we have to take something down. And because stuff is going to get posted, but this way, we if people are like, I didn't know there was a rule about that, we can at least say, well, there was one. It's real, you know. So this would kind of, this would probably end up in the... Um, in the channel description, but also where's the, um, if we go to the top of everything here, uh, actual rules, this would be, you know, let's see, we've got, we've got four com uh, rules in our current community addendum. Uh, one about spoiler tags, one about asking permission for things, uh, third rule is about sharing imagery that's been co-opted by hate groups like swastikas. Uh, the fourth one is no celebrating the bo bodily harm or death of a real person. So our fifth, this is not a huge list of rules, but the fifth rule to go in there would be uh, verify the quality of your source before posting a link in current events. So this, this would be, we would be adding 25% more rules <laughs> to the server in terms of the community addendum. But I do think that this is the sort of thing that's going to be required to keep the server vital and functioning well in a post-AI slop world. Okay. So does anybody else have any other comments on that before we move on to item two? Joju says it's a rule worth having. Anybody else? I'm going to leave this open for a few seconds. Now is the time to speak up if you got anything. I don't see anybody typing. Um, Joe. Can we yeah, just have that, that rule instead of being specific to channels, just say, hey, this is a general rule because if you're talking about Minecraft, yeah, and someone goes on a big long article about new features of Minecraft that anyone who follows the change log updates is like, this isn't from Mojang, it's not real. Why is it here? Like, we get junk everywhere. Do we get junk like that in our Minecraft channel, though? Is we have it... not, but I have definitely seen articles like that where I'm yeah. just shaking my head. Because I guess my question here is, I, I wanted to scope this to current events initially to kind of test it. If it ends up being a problem across other things later, 
I feel like we removed that qualification. But like, um, part of this though is I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to test this rule with the edge cases that might show up in identity where somebody's posting a Neo city site about somebody who, you know, uh, shares their cultural background, writing about something they attended in the 1960s. And I don't, I don't want to have to go figure out if that's a real person who attended that event in the 1960s or not. Right. I feel like there's, there's a lot of corners of the internet where the only place to get information from might not be easily verifiable. Current events is one of those ones where, in general, we can figure out if something is a real news source or not. Um, and so I, I feel like we're going we're gonna to initially do this with current events. If this becomes a problem elsewhere, as AI stuff gets worse, if it becomes a problem in gaming and feels an identity and all these other places we can, you know, take what we learned from the current events bit and refine and adjust it moving forward. But I'm, I'm more comfortable scoping it to current events at the moment. Um, does anybody else feel strongly about that in one way or the other? Okay, cool. And we, we can revisit that in the future. Um, I'm not going to explicitly add it to the agenda the way we did the text-based thing, but if it's a problem, it'll be on the agenda in the future. Uh, Tommy, I think that's the end of uh, item one, right? That's right. What do we got? So the second and last item on the agenda I have is about moying, accelerating drops or updates, and bleeding edge server and vanilla server expectations. This is from Lady Oolong. Okay, we had a lot of comments and feedback on this, which I have read. I try not to respond too much directly in the feedback text channels because I don't want to seem like I'm closing off an avenue of discussion. Um, so in some ways, the feedback channels get the lightest touch from a moderation standpoint. I do try to answer direct questions or clarify things if I feel like people are making assumptions that are false. But um, yeah, I have been keeping up with those channels. Lady Oolong, since this was your agenda item initially, uh, would you like to say anything before we get started on this? Yeah, sure. So um, just a couple points I want to make. One, um, I care more about having the discussion than any particular one of those things being implemented. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm you know, willing to you know, entertain any you know, compromises or alternate suggestions to those. Sure. Um, at two... Um, each oh, option is a thing um, I want considered independently. Um, you know, if one of them gets implemented, it may, you know, remove the push to have the others, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in particular... Um... Lady Oolong wrote, what, the first item in your initial request was not removing data packs when the server gets a Minecraft update, unless not removing them breaks the server. Uh, so I will say with the last few rounds of data packs, the Vanilla, Peaks, the Vanilla Tweaks people in their Patreon Discord have explicitly said, do, like, um, if you are updating your server, do not use the old data packs. And they didn't necessarily say what would happen if you did, but they went out of their way to like, make it clear that they thought that was a very bad idea. And for me, that is enough of a warning to not want to do that. There has been some really heavy under the hood data pack changes. And in theory, they would break gracefully and not cause any corruption or anything like that. But we don't necessarily have, um, I, I don't want to find that out because even when you test something like this, like when we've had huge problems on Hermitcraft in the past, it's been the sort of thing where the initial test looks fine, but it's only when six people get online and start firing up redstone machines or something, all of a sudden we get a bunch of corrupted chunks. But between the corrupted chunks and the restart, somebody went and built a huge thing. And so then we can't roll back without isolating regions or sometimes the regions were in the corrupted chunks that we need the rollback or uh, it's, it creates a lot of problems. 
if something goes wrong like that. Um, and it's very hard to test aggressively or it's, it's hard to test, let's say comprehensively. Um, so yeah, in general, I have been following the advice of the vanilla tweaks people on that. And maybe they're being too cautious because they don't want to be liable for server chunk corruption, but I don't want to be liable for server chunk corruption either. So this was not me using my own initiative to refuse to use these going forward. This was me following the advice of the people who made them. Um, so I don't know if that matters one way or the other to y'all, but I'm not... I understand oh, the concern. I don't have enough background in Minecraft technical stuff to weigh in on it. I do know that around the, one of the last updates, you know, in the time frame where you, you were super busy with uh, wedding and the immigration stuff, mm -hmm. um, a, one of the data packs not being on the server either the player heads or the mop heads yeah. um, was suspected of being responsible for um, crashing changes in the end or it, crashing in the end. Yeah. And that's an issue too, where to some degree, this is the first time we've tried having data packs on the bleeding edge server. And the general assumption was it shouldn't break anything if we don't have them. Be, like if we update without them. And that may not have been the case. If we need to, we can, for the 11th server, avoid using the data packs and mods entirely. And maybe that'll help make people more likely to want to play on Vanillish. Um, I was kind of expecting, when we first created the Vanillish server, it had all the data packs and stuff people wanted on 7 of 9, or 7 of mine. Um or maybe it was, what was the ninth one? I'm blanking on the name. Um, Deep Slate Nine, Joe. Deep Slate Nine, thank you. Yeah, the idea was, okay, well, all the stuff people wanted on Deep Slate Nine but didn't get, we'll put on Vanillish. And then I figured, okay, there's going to be an Exodus, and everybody will go play on Yurgi's server, and I'll keep running my Bleeding Edge server for the people who really want that. Because that's the intellectual challenge for me that I find exciting, is I want to I want to run a server that's on the Bleeding Edge. And there's actually a lot of advantages for that. When we are ha running into problems on the Hermitcraft server, I can cross-check things on my server, and I can be involved in the discussions and troubleshooting there in a way... Like, y'all are directly helping the Hermits by playing on this server. And you're also paying to be here. So I wanted you guys to have a server that had all the cool toys you wanted, but I also wanted to personally run a server that would be of value um, to me creatively and intellectually and also to the hermits. So I was kind of expecting, okay, everybody's going to go play on Vanillish, and then I'll just have a few people sticking around over here. And, uh, you know, we'll probably eventually start calling Vanillish the flagship server. But for whatever reason, people stuck around here. Um, I'm still fine with making that transition, um, it, you know, and if it, if it's too much of a problem for the bleeding edge server to have the data packs on it, we can pull those out in the 11th iteration. But for, in terms of 10th or word, like we're going to carry forward. Like, I feel like if I launch a season of a server, um, that's kind of telling people like, Hey, you have a certain amount of time to build projects on a certain scale. And I said, okay. This is going to be a server where we're always on the bleeding edge and we have data packs when we can get them. And that's what I'm going to deliver between now and the end of the season on this. So if we wanted to do this again without data packs next time for 11th iteration, okay. I'd be willing to hear that out. I, okay. Go yeah, on. Not, I, I don't mind the the hiccups. That's just what happens on any server. Honestly, because you're going to have to update at some point or else you're going to be way behind the updates mm -hmm. from Minecraft. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where um, I want to give people a server that meets their needs. And if this server won't, that's one of the reasons we have several others. But um, like, it's impossible for me to create one server that is going to meet every need for every person. And um, right. So, uh, but yeah. As, as far as data packs, there are some that are on the Hermitcraft server. And I think part of the appeal of the flagship 
is that it is a close kin to the Hermitcraft server. That's part of the thing is that a lot of the desire for the flagship has been, hey, can we get closer to what Hermitcraft is? Yes. And realistically, the tempo of updates for Vanillish ends up being closer to the tempo of updates for Hermitcraft than for the flagship server because the flagship server is ahead of Hermitcraft on the bleeding edge. But I'm also using that to inform the decision that the group makes about when we update our server. So this, th there, there will always be a bleeding edge server, even if like there's only three people playing on it. I'll always be running a bleeding edge server just so that I can go check logs or do certain, um, you know, profiling things with the CPU and like, okay, what are, what are the resources it's using when I'm doing this? Like having that environment running on legitimate hardware in a data center somewhere is valuable. Um, and so, you know, it might be that, so one of the things that we did this season was that the vanilla server doesn't have the same seed as Hermitcraft. And I feel like it's worth revisiting if next season we make sure that the vanilla server launches with the same seed of Hermitcraft and explicitly updates when Hermitcraft updates. So that way we can ensure that it's always got the, if you want to always have the same data packs as Hermitcraft and you always want to run the same data packs as Hermitcraft, that can be the vanilla server's role. And I've talked a little bit with Yergi about this and um, I was expressed that we could even try something like that sooner than later. Because I feel like my guess is we probably got about another year or so on the current Hermitcraft world. And that's a long time to go without a server reset. So if we wanted to add a second vanilla server that Yergi would be in charge of, that focused on feature parity and version parity with Hermitcraft in a way that the current one doesn't. I don't want to end the current vanilla season early because we promised people it would be available for a certain amount of time and they might have projects on a scale where they want to play it out. Right. Um, but adding basically a second vanilla server, that's a Hermitcraft parity server. Um, now it would be starting this time in the middle of the Hermitcraft season. And it would probably wrap up the same time that Hermitcraft wraps up in about a year or so. These are not hard numbers. We, we have no idea. But everybody generally agreed uh, last time we spoke about it, like, ah, eh, there's a lot left to do. We're in no rush, you know? So I, I thought, like, okay, well, maybe we launch that sooner than later. Yergi's okay with running that, but didn't think that it would help or that there was a need so I figured I would ask you guys, do you guys think that would help? Do you guys think there's a need for that? Or are you happy just kind of riding it out until season 11 starts? I like. The I idea agree that. with your... Sorry, finish. I kind of agree with Yergi in that I think it's more of a... a social poll, speaking as somebody who uh, used to play modded pretty exclusively mm. um, you know and I joined you know a little bit into this season uh, when I was looking at the servers I expected I would be playing on vanillish but uh, um, between you know, you know the the social activity being on flagship and also vanillish as it is just doesn't add enough value. For me mm -hmm. to pull me away from the flagship server, um, you know, when I think kind of in the um, you know th things that fit with vanilla, uh, mm -hmm. that Mojang just hasn't added, etc. Yeah, and you know we do have like the we've done several modded series that are more full on modded experiences. Right now we've got Toxic running our Vault Hunter series, which I know Vault Hunters is a very particular type of mod pack that might not be for everybody. In the future, we might mix other stuff in there again too. But um, yeah, differentiating Vanillish from the mainline from the flagship server has been something that yeah I I don't know exactly what to do on that, but. 
I figure we'll revisit this more heavily when we start looking at launching season 11. When season 10 wraps up on Hermitcraft, we'll have, you know, some good, uh, we'll have a bit of a heads up about when, uh, you know, when we could expect the next season to launch. Uh, let me read some text from the meeting discussions real quick. Um, so Centortron says, I like how 10th Orward is being updated right now where we get the fun packs, but it still updates readily. Joju says, I have the survey results. Not sure when I should share those. We'll get back to those in a second, Joju. Um, Kindle says, Mojang drops hiccup uh, hiccups. Eh. Mojang drops hiccups on us when they update. So the data packs have been functionally nothing in comparison to what Mojang has done. Um, Gaia says, I'm happily waiting till season 11. Most of us have project currently, and everyone might be more excited to swap worlds when the new Hermitcraft season starts. And uh, Centortron says, my opinion is that 10th Orward is more intriguing than Deep Slate 9, but I don't want to sacrifice the updates. Okay, so you, you think that the, the particular setup of PAX is, is really cool, but you think the updates are cool too. Okay, um, yeah, Joju, uh, if you have those survey results, um, I had actually asked if you could post those on Friday, like weeks ago. I was like, if you could post those the Friday before the event so everybody can review those, that'd be great. So, Oh, sorry, sorry, I thought, no, I thought you... It's I might, fine. I might cut cut the results off and then report them here. Oh no no no! Okay. I, I meant cut the results Sorry. off and then share them so people have time to write feedback. But oh. um, I figured with the election, you might have forgotten about it. And honestly, I didn't want to press you because this is unpaid volunteer labor. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and if you want to share those, do you have okay. them in text form or a link or something? I can post. I can post them. I think I'd have to screenshot them and format them before I give as a report. But the oh, top there's line not like is, a, it's not like a Google sheet. You can just hit share. Um, I can make it a Google sheet quick, actually. Yeah, thank you. Because some people are more visual and it's going to be a lot of information at once. Yeah. And th that ties into the other two options that were presented about, you know, adjusting the update schedule. Um, the concern I was thinking about with mods was partly um, there was a point, um, you know, right when I first joined, when you know an update was happening, and there were complaints that you know it, it, it was well the company town c contest was still ongoing, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's, it's like people are like, you know, if the server updates, they were literally not going to be able to play until you know, the various mods updated, um, you know, these being client mods. Mm -hmm. um, the, I don't think that is the case for that person anymore, um, just going by my memory. And I don't mm -hmm. think we turned up any serious issues with that from the survey re results, at least not the initial ones. Yeah, and I will say, so for certain types of client mods like Lightmatica, um, you know, where like somebody's like, oh, I really wanted to use Lightmatica during this parade, but now it, now I can't. I feel like that's kind of like weather, like Mojang, Mojang's wild release schedule raining on your parade might mean you have to improvise some, but these are not technically like Lightmatica contests. These are building contests and I'm not restricting what tools you can use, but if those tools happen to break, at a certain level, if you've got to, you you either show up and try to build the best you can without them, or you skip it. Like that's a, uh, you know, if I was if I was explicitly like doing Lightmatica parade floats sponsored by Lightmatica. If you haven't tried Lightmatica, they gave me five grand for this, so you should. You know, like I I would then I'd adjust the tempo to make sure Lightmatica is updated for five grand, but like they're not doing that. You know, it's. I, I feel like um, it kind of evens the playing field a little bit for the people who don't want to use those build mods too if they don't know for sure if their opponents are going to be able to use them. So, um, I, yeah, It's a very subjective thing. For, I think I you believe there are people who would feel uh, you know, really seriously handicapped without having those tools available and there's other people who believe they would be, you know, too much of a benefit. And I don't think there is a cut and dried answer to that debate. That's why I kind of feel like treating it like weather and letting the gods decide 
feels like a good compromise for me because my gut instinct is just to ban Light Matica. But I know that that's not the reality of how a lot of people want to play the game. And so I'm happy to compromise with, we'll let the gods decide. We'll allow Light Matica, but we won't guarantee it. That that feels like a good way to meet people in the middle. Um, because if I was asked to give a definitive yes or no on Light Matica, I would say no. And so I'm going to avoid the definitive, and I'm going to go with, this is the weather. That's actually something I tried to tease out in the survey results, which I've now linked and updated. Um, oh, thank you. With some tabulation. Um, I did. I tried to catalog by uh, type of mod what people were using mods for to interface with on this on Tenth Word, and the general sense I got is most people use a mod loader, but everyone who answered said they were willing to play without it if needed. So mm -hmm. the sense I got is it would be nice, but it's not strictly necessary to wait for everything to catch up. I would recommend just based on results results generally waiting for a forger fabric patch before updating but those update pretty quickly or if that's not a problem that's something that could, that could be changed with expectations that we have an extra vanilla server mm -hmm. i'm just uh flipping through this real quick uh bu -bu -bu -bu. let me let me read the comments in particular um I often use light level display mods, free cam and Bobby mod. Um, bum, 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 bum. Um, I want to learn armor stands, but it hasn't been installed for large stretches of time. Yeah, that's something, you know, what we've had an unusual period of me being extra busy with the immigration stuff and the wedding stuff. And I'm starting to have a little bit more capacity as these mods do become available, I should be able to get on the server and update them. You know, if the mod makers haven't updated them, that's a different thing. Um, but uh, the only performance issue I have right now is chunk loading goes wonky when I'm flying out to places. I think that has everything to do with the render distance. And as long as Sodium works, I can play the game mostly the same way. But tools like Mini HUD and FreeCam really help my builds, being able to dis display light levels so I can ensure spawn proofing. A planning uh, were critical for one build. Okay, that's fair. Um, you know, at the same time, like, I mean, I, I don't play with all of these tools, and I still have a lot of fun playing Minecraft. So, I mean, I also get blown up a lot. Uh, so, yeah. But, I yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily hold off for Mini HUD to update. You know, that's not, in my opinion, a blocker. Um but once again, I don't object to running a second server that does run on that timeline. So anybody who feels like this is a deal breaker for them, I don't want them to feel like they can't, you know, get along and play here. And like, there's also nothing stopping people from saying, you know, I'm going to do my main base and my big builds on Vanillish, but you know what? I'm still going to have like a small house set up on 10th or word and then go participate in the parades. You know, you're not paying to pick a server, you know, um, so it's like, okay, if I want my chill gaming time to be in the setup that I, I love and I know no matter what, at the end of the day, I can always play it. Vanillish will be there for you. Um, but yeah, and then if you're like, oh, I want to go play with the new stuff, well, 10th Order will be there for you too. I want to go be in this parade. Well, Light Matica might not show up, but you know the parade will happen and, and you can build if you want. Um, so yeah, that's... that's uh, I don't think there's any real surprises in here, Joju. Is there anything that you feel like is a, a particular note or requires urgency or action? Nothing that requires urgency or action. It was just it was interesting to me to see how to see how people use the base launcher versus what I versus what I expected. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a different set of expectations from what I had. So I think there might the problem might be with more with a few players who have a lot of specific needs and I count myself among them than a broader problem. Okay. I will um, note that uh, Modern came out with their own launcher and it's pretty nice so far. Yeah, I don't I don't love using launchers run by websites that collect mods. Personally, I'm not going to do that. I mean, it might end up being the right tool for the job later, but 
I, I that that level of dependency on a single source makes me nervous. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean that's fine if people want to use it, but I'm not gonna time my thing. Um, Kindle List says I was shocked to see I'm the only respondent to use accessibility mods. When I know very well a bunch of people here use accessibility mods. Um, I mean, maybe there's a disagreement of the definition of accessibility mods. Kindleist, could you say which one in particular you use? Tweak a to get rid of fog and gamma override. Fair enough. And weather effects that cause strobing. Does Mojang not have a anti-strobing thing now? I thought that the 121.3 had an anti-strobing thing. Is it insufficient? It, they do, but it's not as good as I like. You know, that's the sort of thing... Um, that's the sort when I talk about like one of the reasons we run a bleeding edge server is so we can take information back to Mojang so I can take information back to the hermits. Um, it acts as a blanket nuke on all strobing. Okay. Uh, defining accessibility mods was a problem that came up in discussion of you know, re re revising the survey because you know th things that mm -hmm. are not specifically labeled as accessibility mods might have an accessibility use for some people mm -hmm. and you know that's a you know very diverse field of possibilities yeah that's fair um i mean in general if there are things that there are in-game workarounds for. Like the gamma thing, we set up a button with a command block so people can use base vanilla functionality to get perfect night vision, full bright gamma, or whatever. Um, if there's other things like that that we can set up at spawn, I definitely would want to, because I'm not trying to exclude anybody from the server. Um, but, yeah, realistically, at a certain point, if we're trying to build... or it, if if we're if we're trying to have one of the four servers be a bleeding edge server, we're going to be dependent on what Mojang puts in their game. This server can only be as accessible as Mojang allows, basically. Um, Yeah, I tried my set the survey. I tried to give examples of the mods that I thought would qualify. Twiggeru specifically, I didn't count because I thought of it more as a technical thing. But I'm seeing mm -hmm. Kindleus's argument now, and uh, as I said in the comment, as I said in the text chat, I would have rephrased that to be using mods for accessibility related reasons. And I'm curious if anyone who answered the survey would have answered differently, knowing that. Yeah. Well, and yeah. Like and, and this is the sort of thing, too, where um, if there's assistive devices or peripherals that could also be used to route around, like, so, like, the item scroller um, that Mantua Maker, you know, reduces fatigue. Like, you know, for all I know, maybe there's some sort of USB device that, you know, um, you know people could chip in I'm not, I'm not in a, like, this is one of those things, like, if I, if I wasn't in a really tight place with money right now, I would have no problem saying, Mancho Maker's been here for years, contributing to the community, oh, there's some dial that we can buy, even if it's like a hundred bucks, like, whatever, like, you know, I'll toss a hundred bucks at the problem, because I want Mancho Maker to play on this server, you know, I, this is not anything that I'm, I do not want anyone to be excluded here. And if we can't solve the problems in software, I want to solve them in hardware. I want to solve them, okay? Um, I Like I said, I am not in a financial position to offer that right now. But Mancho Maker, if there are specific things that there are hardware options for, um, like that would be something that I think uh, is worth looking into. 
Um, and maybe I, I would not, uh, yeah, I have to be really careful about what I say here. Cause like I said, if I could just send you this, I would just spend the money myself and buy it, but I don't even know if it exists. Um, so yeah. So Mancho says being able to move things from shulkers either and not having to put shulkers down to see what's in them helps reduce game fatigue. Um, Lady Oolong says the giant scale pick Joe gave out last petitions has been a, a fantastic alternative for free cam for me as a build assist tool. Um, Queen Dark Lady says, I also see there's not a lot of responses to the survey, only 13 if I'm reading it correctly. So I'm not sure that's fully representative of all players on the server. Uh, Joji says, that was a question I had. How many people are whitelisted? Uh, something like... That's a really good question. It's definitely more than a hundred. Not all of those people are necessarily still Patreon members because one of the problems we have is because we're not using a fancy whitelist API, um, I would have to manually remove people. So the number of people that are on the whitelist versus the number of people that are paying for access is not the same. Um, and in general, that hasn't really been a problem. I was thinking about doing some sort of audit at some point, but that's like, it would probably take me eight hours to like go through and cross reference everything. Cause there's not, I don't have like a spreadsheet somewhere with people's in game name and their Patreon name. So I'd have to go back, figure out their discord name in relation to their Patreon name in relation to their Minecraft name. Um, but let me see. If I go to my Patreon website, I can see how many people are currently paying for $10 a month access. Uh, go to Insights. Okay. So how do I... Okay, audience. Give me a second. Uh, benefits. No. So if I try to filter this by paid members who are at $10 or higher, apply filters. Oh, wait, that can't be right. Okay, that's definitely wrong. Let me add more filters. Okay, active payment, that's important. Uh, 173. Could I do a survey to see who's active? I don't really like bothering people unless it's directly actionable is the thing. Like, that's the other thing, too, is like, if I had a specific goal for a survey, I could do it. But... I what about don't. putting in a newsletter? Just at the end of the newsletter, like, hey, this is a survey being run by the community. I, no, no, I no. draft something for that. Well, no, no, no. What I'm saying is I'm not going to ask people to fill something out unless I designed it with a person in mind or with a purpose in mind or commissioned it with a purpose in mind. I'm. It's. It, I don't like asking people who are paying me money to do things unless I have a good reason. And I don't, I don't have like a specific reason to do a survey and without a specific reason to do a survey. Well, how do I decide what questions go in it? Like, how do I like, like the, if I was trying to do a survey to decide if we should do a second vanilla service, a second vanilla server with, Hermitcraft parody launching before Christmas so people can play on it over Christmas break. That would be like a purpose. But everybody I've talked to about this says, Joe, that's not going to solve anything. Don't do that. So I don't really know. I don't have any good. I don't have any ideas to test. Like, I feel like I've got enough data from the people 
who are here, people show up and talk. I read the feedback channels. I've read the general channel in 10th or word, you know, like, I don't know. I don't have any questions at this point. So yeah. Kindle says, I suspect, suspect this is close to fixating on viewership numbers. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, that's the other thing is like, I'm not an analytics driven creator. I'm kind of an art driven creator. And so to some degree, a lot of this community stuff is not directly part of my art, but it is adjacent where I'm kind of taking a, I'm not looking at this as the business side of things. I'm looking at this as I'm applying different gut instincts to this based on what I know about people than I would to my art, which is also a lot of gut instincts about what I know about people, right? Like, um, so yeah, I'm not going to do anything that's really analytics or data driven without a specific goal, because I think data for data's sake is a trap for artists. And even if this isn't directly my art, this is a community where people are supporting me for being an artist. So I'm going to approach this as one. So, yeah. Joju, you're a very data-driven, analytical person in terms of your approach to politics. And so I appreciate you bringing that skill set here and you trying to frame this as an exercise for yourself and for the community and for sharing the results. So I'm not trying to diminish what you've done either. No, I'm I, just I, saying I, it's not the approach I would have taken myself unless I had a good reason. Yeah, it hurt. Yeah, it hurts your professional level, but I too, I do totally understand your reasoning, and I can get behind it. Um, Lady Yulong says, "I think we have caring enough to be vocal about the issue as the metric here. That is, that is a hundred percent it. Yeah, no, you put something on an agenda, and I spent a lot of time behind the scenes talking to Yurgi about this. I've been floating ideas um, during streams, talking to people about, you know." Like, what if you ran a server like this? What if we did this? What if we did that? Like, I've, I've been actively thinking about this for weeks. And the best thing I could come up with was, do we need a, a second vanilla server? And it seems like, no. So at this point, we'll, I think we'll have better information about, does Mo Microsoft might not maintain this tempo, right? They, they say this is the direction they're heading, but honestly, by the time we launch the iteration 11 server season 11 server they might have completely gone back to like oh you know what that was a dumb idea we're going back to yearly updates so we really don't have enough data from them yet i feel like we come back to this on the eve of the season 11 launch i, I say uh, not the eve that's the day before but like we come back to this for season 11 planning and we figure out ways to make sure that people who need a certain level of consistency can get that from a vanillish that is meaningful and populated. And we make sure that, you know, the uh, bleeding edge server is functional at its thing. Um, mm. Which, once again, we might be undermining that functionality by including data packs at all. I'm willing to come back to the idea that maybe this is just not the server with the data packs, but I don't, it's too early to decide that now. Centortron says, quick general question about data packs on 10th or word. You've mentioned being in favor of Hermitcraft updating quicker than it does. Has running similar packs to Hermitcraft is still updating quickly, giving you information you can take an X about updating quicker there? Yes. That is actually the number one reason for me to keep doing the data packs on season 11. Um, that is that is the only reason I considered it at all for season 10. And once again, I'm not sure how that experiment will be viewed when it's run its course at the end of season 10. But um, yeah, that is that is definitely a major factor in my considering it. I, I do want to point out, and I've said this a few times yeah. in the past, uh, the, the goal in presenting this discussion is not to push for a update schedule like Hermitcraft. Um, frequency mm -hmm. were give you know when, when a mo when, when Mojang drops an update, give you know a few days to a week to let 
the dust settle. Um, I'm not. You know, if I, mods are ready, they're ready. If they're not, they're not. Um, you know, in the hope that you know, if there were any serious accessibility problems for people caused by not having client mods ready, you know, they would be mitigated. Um, if, um, as happened last time, Mo Mojang drops a uh, you know hot fix the day after you know a major release. Um, Joe doesn't have to update the server twice. You know, you know, part of the goal is Joe does less work, not more work. I I appreciate that. However, having it hanging over my head that I haven't done it yet stresses me out. And so part of this is kind of m mitigating my own workflow hangups and things like that. The idea of having to decide if I've waited long enough to update instead of just saying the next time I have a mo the, the next time I have enough time to do it, I do it. Like just it's in my queue. Let's get it out of my queue. Works very well for me. Um, saying I'm going to do it in three to seven days. Well, now I'm I'm overthinking it. I'm oh, like because I'm going to keep going back to like you know maybe I'll just do it now. You know oh you know it's the weekend. Some people are going to want to play it this weekend. Some people like it. It's the sort of thing that I ruminate on and I don't want to. And so, like, if we had a, a trailing server that was a seven-day update server, I'd, I'd be happy to let Yergi run it, but that's that's not the server I want to run. I don't want to be responsible for yeah. deciding and, and, three and days did, or seven you days. Put, yeah, I, I did put a specific figure of, like, you know, seven days on to the proposal with the idea that it could be changed, you know, by discussion, but... You know, I you know, get where you're coming from. Then that that's like having you know it be a specific rule rather than something you have to make a decision over. Yeah, the making a decision part is what I want to avoid. Kindle says I would only ask if a hot fix is already announced and the server hasn't updated yet. Maybe hold off for the extra day. Yes, I if if I go to do it and they say, oh, there's a huge bug. It's corrupting chunks. We'll have a hot fix out shortly. Then no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna intentionally install a bad update. Um, that that's common sense. But at that point, there's no decision for me to make. The decision has been made by Mojang. Um, but uh, Queen Dark Lady says, "I like the way Tenth Forward is run, but maybe when Vanilla is reset, branding as something more along the lines of the Hermitcraft experience might help draw people toward it." Yeah, and that's something too. Is like. Yeah, Vanillish doesn't have as many community events as or whatnot as Tenth Orward does, but also that's not very Hermitcraft. Like these build contests are actually something that nobody will do on Hermitcraft. Everybody is terrified of running build contests. Nobody wants to evaluate each other's art, and I feel like that's a huge missed opportunity. Um, but you will you will not see a parade float build contest on Hermitcraft ever. I constantly suggest build uh, di different build challenges or contests and it's, it's always shot down. So yeah, that that's actually a huge non Hermitcrafty thing about the flagship server is the fact that we have things where somebody comes in and tells you whose art deserves to win a prize. Like, um, but yeah, so yeah, the, the that would be very aligned with the Hermitcraft experience. The fact that this is the non-judgmental server. Well, yeah, actually, that's a good branding for it. We've got the judgmental vanilla server and the non-judgmental vanilla server. <sighs> oh, yeah, you're really onto something there, Queen Dark Lady. I like that. I like that. Um, so okay, I feel like we have covered most of what you brought up lady oolong was there any other facets of this that you feel like still need further exploration i can't think of anything right now um i think it's going to be uh we'll see how things go with mojang and you know the, the next few updates mm -hmm. that's how i feel too i feel like we'll have more data once they either maintain or drop this tempo because it turned out to kill their dev team. So, okay, I've got 15 minutes before my next stream. As far as I can tell, we're through with the agenda. Um, we don't have any additional items after this. So before we formally close out this agenda item and this meeting, 
Um, does anybody besides Lady Oolong have anything that they feel like I failed to address from the 10th or word feedback or the vanillish feedback about agenda item two? Cool. Well, thank you, Lady Oolong, for bringing this up. This is a great time for us to take stock of this stuff because when we're three months out from the new season, we can look back at this and kind of use that to calibrate where we want to go next uh, with the additional information. So I really do appreciate you doing that. Uh, Joju, thank you for gathering the data. Thank you to everybody who submitted data to Joju. Um, it was interesting to review, even if there wasn't any big surprises in there for me. Um, okay, Tommy, is there anything that we have missed? No, I think that was it. Cool. Well, I think we are ready to close out this meeting. I've got to go hop on a call with Mr. Joker TV to play Kingdom in 15 minutes, by which I mean I'm supposed to go do sound checks with him like right now. So I'm going to go, but hopefully I'll see some of y'all in chat at that stream. Catch you in a bit. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you, Tommy.